Hello everyone, Stefan here. Welcome to the stream. Um, tonight uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna make a, another character. Last time I did, a, on Wednesday, I did a, an environment, a little tile for the map. Um, it was uh, this one, the uh, uh, train station. Uh, turns out that uh, on Instagram it was uh, pretty popular. There was uh, quite more likes than uh, I was uh, expecting. Uh, by far the, uh, the tile that was um, the most uh, appreciated by... Uh, the people on Instagram, so I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, I guess I have more people now following me, so that makes sense too. But uh, still, uh, you act uh, the this style actually uh, got more uh, likes than uh, the Predator, which uh, I thought the Predator would uh, would would get a, a lot more attention. But um, but turns out that people uh, seem seem to like uh, this sort of a, a little. Uh, tiny representation of environment um, it's, a, it's a interesting to see that maybe because it's a, it's a bit more um, unique than uh, this uh, I mean those are just characters that people already know not sure um, but still I have uh, to uh, answer the the question of uh, how these uh, environment let's say this is for the you know your map um, how this will translate when uh, you're in the uh, uh, in the actual uh, screen where the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay happens. You're in this location, and how does uh, I think it's going to be like a some sort of side view, maybe isometric. Um, I was looking at Voxel. Uh, there's a really good software that uh, came out, and uh, I haven't uh, had the time to try it. But I wonder if I wouldn't try. Uh, have uh, the environments done in voxel and voxels are uh, this sort of a uh, little uh, they're like little cubes really um, they're um, uh, simply put uh, pixel art in uh, in in 3d uh, you can just uh, uh, paint uh, whatever you want and uh, create an, uh, a whole environment just uh, uh, with a bunch of voxels which are kind of like little pixels in 3d they're little cubes it's interesting it's a nice uh, approach um let's see if i can find um uh an example uh see this is this kind of stuff some people are doing really cool stuff all made with uh, little cubes so it <clears throat> retains that sort of um old school uh pixel art vibe but it's uh 3d and uh, what's uh, good about that, look at this, really nice. What's good about that is that you can actually light it um, in a, I really, I really like this. Um, you can light it with a, a, um, an actual uh, lighting engine. Uh, so you can have a pretty sophisticated lighting with a um, GI even. Um, so that might be, a, that might be a, an, an interesting avenue. Um, and I think uh, this sort of uh, little environment, um, I feel like, um, copy image. I think it would probably fit quite well with uh, the characters, you know. I think this, uh, this, uh, this may uh, work interestingly. So, so we'll have to see. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, certainly something uh, that I'm going to explore soon. I have to make sure it's all readable and nice. But um, there's definitely some uh, some interesting uh, approach there. So. Or I'll make it just a 2D, you know, with uh, some parallax, like old school, a bunch of uh, of uh, planes um, that would uh, parallax a little bit, just to give it a bit of uh, volume, and uh, paint this in uh, in a normal uh, 2D uh, space. So we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, uh, so um, tonight we're going to do uh, th this character, 
uh, Annie Wilkes uh, or Wilkes. I don't know how you pronounce this because it's it's spelled uh, W E I L K E S. So is it Wilkes or Wilkes? I, I'll say Wilkes. To me, that sounds more reasonable. Um, I can't remember how they pronounce it in the movie. So uh, Annie Wilkes, she's a um, um, character from uh, the m m movie uh, Misery, uh, a movie by uh, Rob Reiner, came out in 1990, and it was based on the book that uh, Stephen King wrote uh, in 1987. But only three years later, um, the movie really came out really quickly. It's uh, pretty uh, rare that uh, they go so fast to uh, uh, acquire the rights for a movie and uh, go r almost right into production right away. Uh, pretty rare, and uh, especially for a movie that turned out uh, really good. Um, actually, it's one of the only uh, films that, uh, the rare films that Stephen King praises. Um, that he, uh, he thought that uh, it was uh, pretty faithful to his uh, original uh, book and idea. Uh, he hated um, what uh, Stanley Kubrick did for The Shining, even though uh, it's considered like a, a horror masterpiece, but uh, he, uh, he didn't agree with the, uh, the direction that uh, Kubrick had took. Um, he, was, uh, he didn't like a bunch of movies that were done uh, by, um, and you know, I think it's uh, often the case because Nathar has always a very specific idea in mind and uh, um, when uh, another creative people uh, get into uh, into it they have to bring uh, some of their own uh, sensibility so uh, there's uh, often uh, a lot of uh, conflicting uh, views but um, but in this case you really liked uh, what uh, Rob Reiner did hello she murder bunny welcome Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do uh, Annie Wilkes from um, from Misery, and uh, and like I was saying, yeah. So um, uh, it's uh, interesting that Rob Reiner made this movie because uh, he's uh, anything but a horror movie director. Uh, he's uh, well known for all the um, the crazy. I guess she's kind of a murder bunny, right? <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. I guess uh, you could call it that. Um, and uh, uh, Rob Reiner, he was very well known for all the um, comedies that he made. Uh, he made some really good films uh, from, uh, um, he did, um, well, my favorite is uh, uh, Princess Bride, The Princess Bride. It's a really charming uh, so, sort of storybook story, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, really uh, clever writing, uh, super writing. Uh, yeah, she is, right? <laughs> Uh, he's a super clever guy. Uh, he's a, a, a true talent for writing. Um, the whole uh, battle of the wits in the uh, scene in uh, The Princess Bride, the whole um, uh, duel, uh, fencing duel. There's so many scenes that are really exceptional in this uh, in this thing. So really my favorite. But he also made uh, um, for, um, another one that was very well known is uh, when uh, Harry uh, met Sally. So uh, he's, he's known for that sort of stuff. So it's surprising that he uh, he got to make this. But uh, in fact, the way it happens is the, the producer on the movie, uh, they worked as a team, oftentimes a producer and a director. And the producer, she um, she read the book on the plane and uh, really liked it. And she uh, uh, suggested that he would uh, have a look at it. And, uh, and he took this as sort of a challenge for him. It was... Uh, so uh, out of his comfort zone that he felt like uh, it was maybe something that he would grow as a director to, uh, trying to make this. Um, and uh, Stephen King really wanted, Stephen King only um, um, allowed to sell the rights to the movie uh, knowing that Rob Reiner was going to direct or produce it. That was the condition. And that's because uh, Rob Reiner, a few years earlier, he had made a, a really uh, awesome movie that I recommend uh, called Stand By Me. And it's uh, um, it's also based on a short novel by uh, Stephen King called the, Bo the Body, where a bunch of uh, kids in the 60s, they, uh, they, uh, you know, they, they hang out uh, in the woods together. They, they do all sorts of uh, things. And they, in the, during the summer, you know, they have a lot of time. And then they... Uh, they find a body 
of a, of another young man or and uh, it's kind of their first experience with death and during that summer uh they it's sort of a coming on a coming of age movie really well done and uh, and i think they decide to um uh, either bring him back into town or giving a give him a proper uh, burial i don't remember exactly what but it's sort of a this this event sort of seals their friendship and uh, and uh, really uh, makes them grow uh, together um, as uh, as adults, uh, kind of in a you know, uh, it's it's a rush to uh, adulthood. Uh, really a good movie, and uh, uh, Stephen King really liked it. So he, knowing that uh, Robert Reiner was interested in the misery, he said, uh, "I'll sell the rights if uh, if uh, Reiner directs or at least produces." And that's why uh, that's uh, how it happened. And it turns out Rob Reiner did a really awesome job with that. So. Um, I guess a good director is a good director. You know, they just have a um, uh, he's a, he's a intelligent enough to uh, to adapt to a different uh, genre. Uh, really, uh, really good. And Kathy Bates, uh, pretty memorable in that film too. Stephen King loved her as well. Um, she uh, it was her first nomination for an Oscar for Best Actress, and uh, she got it. Uh, she won the Oscar, and uh, it's uh, one of the very rare instances where an actor got the Academy Award for a horror movie. Usually, uh, they don't really uh, uh, give out uh, Academy Awards for actors in uh, 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 genre films, you know, sci-fi, horror. It's more like a traditional drama. So it was a pretty uh, uh, great performance from her, and. Um, and uh, Stephen King even uh, wrote uh, later on. He, he wrote uh, Dolores Claiborne. It's a really good movie. To uh, very different. Uh, there's nothing uh, fantastic. There's no uh, supernatural or horror in it. It's uh, it's more of a, a story of uh, women. You know, women and their how they uh, they have to stick together in a in a world that is uh, largely uh, uh, dominated by a male and uh, and how they struggle and. Uh, and uh, two women, they sort of uh, have this pact, Doris Claiborne and the, the, the old woman uh, uh, whom she uh, takes care of, are very different uh, upbringings, very different people, but they're still uh, bounded by uh, the secret and uh, uh, the fact that they had to uh, do what they had to do in order to survive their uh, husbands or, uh, you know, uh, the... the uh... So it's it's a very, very uh, touching movie. And, um, and actually... Um, uh, Stephen King uh, wrote the the book, thinking of uh, Kathy Bates. He wanted her to be uh, Doris Claiborne, so he uh, wrote the movie in, uh, and uh, she got into. Uh, she actually ma uh, did the film as well, and uh, so he got lucky there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to make her. Um, I did. Um, I I did a, a small, a very small version back in the days when I was doing the tiny sprites and uh, it was uh, I mean this is really the pose I think simple enough uh, with the the sledgehammer I mean the hobbling scene is a uh, such a such a you know a, a shocking uh, scene that everyone remembers uh, that it's probably a, our best uh, a best pose right there it says it all you know um, let me see so I'll show you I have her somewhere there with the pig um, misery actually the name of the pig is misery because she she named it after her favorite uh, heroine from the books that the author is uh, Paul Sheldon is writing because she's our number one fan you know as she as she as she says and uh, so the pig is actually uh, called the uh, misery uh, Big, big, big. Uh, where is Annie? I really have to break this down now. I think I'm getting uh, really uh, too many uh, things going on. It takes too much time. Uh, oh, there you go. There you are. Let's get her out of uh, this folder. Character. 
Chat. Okay, so um, so I'm gonna start from this. Um, it's a good enough uh, uh, pose. It's close enough that I think I can uh, start from this. I'm gonna have a ch to change a, a, a bunch of things as usual when we go from this uh, uh, size to the bigger size. Our proportions tend to uh, get funky, but uh, we can uh, adjust that. Uh, so let's see what kind of size do we want for her I mean she's not I don't think she's uh, that big um, we'll just do a normal size somewhere around uh, what uh, Ripley is uh, Ripley is uh, 58 we'll try to do 58 see how it goes and uh, it's just a it's just a base just a starting point anyway um, Small, we don't want. So I'll copy her over. Oh, I don't have the pick. Okay, well that's fine, I guess. Um, let me get the. Uh, let me get misery the pig. As well, I think I'll change the pose of a, uh, of a, uh, of the, the animal. But uh, I'm still gonna take it. Might as well. So we're back to this pig. Okay, here we go. Yep, so that's it. This is done. And so we're going to take those two. Oh, wait, ah, oh. oh, hold on, I had a selection, I had her selected, so I only copied the what was in her from the pink, uh, what was uh, above her, ah, okay, sorry about that, like I said, too many layers, not necessarily a good idea, okay, there we go, so we'll, uh, we'll copy, um, her in a there, then uh, leave some uh, some room for the pig. Doesn't matter how much. Uh, I'll extend this uh, quite a bit, and we'll take. We'll take misery, have it there, quick. Um, and then, uh, then what I'll do is uh, I'll do a 58 of this, a nearest neighbor as usual because we don't want to uh, resample anything. And now we can take both. Uh, there are so their size has been uh, um, respected, and and there we have a we have a a bit too small, looks like, um, surprisingly. Let's see, where's uh, yeah, it's it. Wow, no, she can be 58. Eh? Must have made a mistake. So, you know what? We're gonna go a little higher than that. Let's go a little more. So, we'll go. We'll go 60, which is good because that'll be exactly the double number of uh, pixels in height. Let's try that. How does that look? Is it better? I'll have uh, her one foot uh, above. It's the proportions that are very different, so that's why she looks uh, a little strange. The uh, the head looks very uh, low. Um, I think I can go even more, definitely. Okay, last uh, try. We'll go 62. 
two, I think. And that should do it. Hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is all right. This is, she's a pretty, I mean, she's a, not a very uh, thin, obviously. So uh, she needs to, uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, she looks a bit, uh, a bit bigger than uh, other character, other female characters, you know. That's probably right. We'll uh, try this. I think the pig will probably end up changing the size and everything. So, it's done. So, there you go. So, I guess we'll go right into it. Uh, let me uh, flip her since it was uh, flipped. And uh, I'm gonna try and uh, replicate this more or less. I mean, it's, this is closed already, so shouldn't uh, be too much of an issue, but we'll see. Already, uh, it's about uh, adding the, the pixels there first, making sure we get um, resolution in. And then we'll get into uh, making the lighting and uh, everything. Actually, the uh, the scene of uh, the uh, the hobbling when you know she breaks her his uh, ankles to prevent him from escaping. Uh, the scene was changed in the in the film because uh, Rob Brenner he wanted to uh, stay away from uh, very uh, gory stuff. Uh, and that's not something that uh, uh, Stephen King would shy away from. Uh, he's uh, he, he kind of likes the uh, the graphic violence uh, in his books, and um, and so they changed it in the book. Uh, she doesn't uh, break his uh, his ankles with the the jack the the sledgehammer. She uh, cuts off uh, one of her of his feet. Uh, which is really uh, even uh, crazier. Um, but they also uh, thought that uh, this would look uh, so uh, uh, intense that maybe uh, uh, it would um, people uh, would uh, the audience would have a hard time um, believing that he could survive uh, such a trauma. You know, like uh, considering uh, the amount of blood that you would lose uh, if someone cuts off. Uh, your your foot you know with a, an a, an axe uh you can imagine uh, the amount of uh, uh you probably go into shock right away and then uh, if you're not transferred blood there's a good chance that uh, you're not gonna make it i i assume i know i'm not a doctor but uh, i i can't imagine that you would uh you'd survive this um and uh, granted she's a nurse so she knows how to take care of his injuries but uh it seems uh a bit far-fetched so I don't think it was uh, necessarily a bad idea and he was still very effective as a as a horror you know um, it was a uh, pretty uh, intense and brutal um, so and uh, poor uh, Kathy Bates uh, she uh, actually already uh, um, hated the the, the violence uh, in the movie um, and she uh, she was very upset by it and um, uh, to the point that um, she was uh, crying before um, at just at the idea of uh, a few scenes like the hobbling scene made her cry before the take and uh, the scene where they have to uh, fight at the end uh, to the death uh, that uh, really uh, made her very very upset and uh, it's always something a bit uh, weird to uh, from I guess from peop from if you're not an actor, um, at least for me, I feel uh, I, I don't necessarily relate to this. But I guess when you're an actor, you probably uh, put so much of yourself into it that um, uh, things become real. You know, it's sometimes a little too real, um, and they uh, end up uh, believing what they're doing. As a joke, actually, in a joke, she uh, when she got her. Uh, uh, Academy Award uh, in her um, 
acceptance speech, she uh, um, she apologized for the scene to uh, James Caan, the uh, the actor who's uh, doing uh, who's playing uh, Paul Sheldon. He was doing uh, really great too. He, he did a. He was a, the very last choice from uh, the producers. Uh, he was. It was really, really. I mean, they virtually. They asked virtually every single other actor uh, available in Hollywood, um, and they all turned down the part. They no one wanted to do it. They asked uh, Harrison Ford. Um, they asked uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, Kevin Klein, uh, uh, Gene Ackman, uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, um, who else? And uh, and a few like at least uh, fifteen, and uh, they all turned it down for one reason or another. So they had to kind of uh, fall back on Plan Z, you know. And uh, that was uh, James Caan, and uh, yeah, I think he did great. He's such not that sort of a character when you imagine James Caan. He was uh, very good in uh, playing the tough guys. If you remember him in uh, the the old uh, 70s movies, like uh, obviously the first that comes in to mind is uh, um, The Godfather. He's uh, playing one of the brothers. Uh, you know, in the family, uh, the one that is uh, very uh, short-tempered and uh, and uh, a bit more violent, uh, but not really suited to take. Uh, he's the uh, he's the older uh, of the boys, but uh, he's not really uh, a good fit to uh, take over the uh, the family because um, uh, the Godfather knows his father actually knows that. Uh, He's a uh, too uh, he's too short tempered, and uh, he'll go to war with everyone, and uh, he can't really uh, uh, be uh, smart enough to. Uh, he's got the guts, but he doesn't have the wits to, uh, and the sort of uh, uh, human skills to uh, take care of the family. And then Fredo, uh, played by um, uh, Casal. Um, and uh, he's a, that's the opposite. He's, he's, a, he's a smart, more sensitive guy, but, uh, but he doesn't uh, have the physical courage to uh, the presence, uh, just a physical presence to uh, when it's needed. So he's not uh, the right choice either. And so it ends up being uh, Al Pacino, uh, Michael, that takes, uh, takes the, uh, over the, um, the family. Because he's a, a good balance, and James Caan too. He did um, uh, Rollerblade. If you remember Rollerblade? That was an uh, interesting uh, thing. Uh, kind of a confusing movie. Uh, very, uh, very. Uh, there's a, a heavy uh, uh, social political message to it um, about uh, you know um, exploitation of violence in. The, in entertainment, sports, and uh, how society uh, generally um, uh, turns to, uh, uh, you know, um, resorts to uh, uh, the basic uh, human instincts, the, the not the good ones, to um, and they exploit this for a profit. Yeah, Ronald Blade. I can't remember the director of that film. They made a new uh, version, a remake that was absolutely terrible, where they uh, really uh, uh, tr changed this into some kind of a, a video game uh, thing. It was just uh, ridiculous. All the uh, the social uh, component was gone. Uh, very uh, very bad, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just going to be uh, pretty fast to do, I think. Um, I guess I'll, I'm gonna just uh, throw a quick uh, face in her. Um, that's the small where That's the small one. We don't need her anymore. And we don't need this. 
I'm gonna get her into the uh, right uh, folder. Here, we'll get um, Ratchet uh, Nurse Ratchet face. It's probably the best uh, bet there. I refined the faces for female and, and male as well. And uh, I think the uh, ultimate version now, definitive version is uh, this sort of stuff for men and, uh, and this for women. I think I'm gonna have to go back to, uh, I said I wouldn't, but I will still go back uh, and uh, change uh, maybe a couple, they're mostly good, but I think men will uh, uh, use the, this one, which is a bit better than, uh, than this. I think. So yeah, uh, misery. Interesting, uh, interesting uh, film, for sure. It was great because um, I feel like um, the character of uh, Annie Wilkes was very. Uh, credible uh, she uh, she she felt like you could really tell that she was uh, um, really out of her mind but um, but that uh, everything was uh, motivated and uh, there was no um, it was not a, a sort of a random uh, madness uh, it uh, it was something that came from uh, her childhood and was uh, uh, sort of a uh, grew over time you know um, uh, because of a uh, various uh, trauma with her father and then uh, and then her job and all that stuff uh, and then uh, sort of uh, became um, mixed up with uh, her uh, passion for 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 the books of uh, Paul Sheldon and they uh, is a uh, uh, really our only uh, escape from a world that had uh, kind of mistreated her and uh, and so uh, she confused, uh, sort of did that uh, that uh, sort of confusion in her mind. And uh, and I was reading actually about uh, sch uh, schizophrenia, and uh, it's a very common thing that for people uh, to uh, um, to to get uh, sick um, when they get uh, mentally uh, sick, they uh, they usually um, use um, um, they project uh, uh, whatever is their passion or uh, their beliefs uh, in within the uh, the you know the fantasies that they imagine. Like uh, there's a, oftentimes a religious component to it. In uh, in that case, it's the it's the, the fan, you know, the uh, the escape and the fantasy of a reading. So she was uh, she was uh, really good. And she feels really desperate in the, in the film. Uh, I think that's what makes her uh, very scary because uh, you can tell that she doesn't uh, really have uh, much to lose. She doesn't really have a good life, and uh, she's uh, she's not uh, she's not going to let him go. You know, it's uh, she'll do whatever it takes. And she goes into those uh, tantrums that are really scary. It's very, uh, she's very uh, uh, unpredictable at times. It's a really cool, uh, very good character. Let's flip her real quick. Not too bad. Get rid of him for now. Yeah, he's uh, he's too big. Well, uh, well I think I'll uh, re do it from scratch. But we will see. It's interesting. Uh, so I found a bunch of uh, references and uh, all the uh, different uh, outfits that she has. So I think uh, this is the same as this. Looks a bit different. The uh, colors are very different there because of lighting. And this is probably a photograph. There is a bit. Um, 
um, you know, it's not uh, uh, quite right, um, the printing. Uh, this one is a bit better. Uh, so I think I'll uh, go for a bit more contrast between the uh, uh, the, the sweater and the, the, the jacket. Uh, I don't know if you call this a jacket, maybe. Um, so I'll uh, probably have a bit more contrast. Uh, this was uh, very good also. She always have this sort of a layering going on in uh, long sleeves and uh, the little, uh, it's very important I think, the little uh, cross. Um, it's always a very uh, dominant uh, thing. It's tiny but there's always uh, this glint on it. Um, you can tell that this is a, a not by accident that they did this. Yeah, what a what a what a talent uh, this woman really uh, incredible. Um, I uh, really loved her in Dolores Claiborne. I think it's uh, one of my favorite uh, from her. It's a very good story too. It's very solid. Um, and again, very uh, very credible character. I think she has this uh, sort of a realistic grit that <clears throat> then uh, not too many uh, actors have um uh, uh, sometimes she makes me think of um uh what's her name uh, the um uh, um she's uh, married to one of the Cohen brothers and uh, she's always in his uh in his uh in his uh, movies uh, she was in uh, for instance uh, burn after reading she was in a uh, um three billboards outside of uh um of uh something misery uh Elb ebbing misery that was a great film too very very different very unique i really recommend this um very uh unique film uh what's the name francis mcdormand yeah i think she has uh, also this sort of a very uh, realistic um uh way of portraying characters she she seems uh, completely uh, genuine and uh, uh, she can play uh, the ordinary, you know, which is difficult to do sometimes. Not too many actors can do that. And I think uh, they have a similar to me, a similar um, sort of a approach. They feel pretty uh, credible. Don't overact or so I, I feel um, I'm gonna look at the reference again. <clears throat> okay, the arms seem uh, a bit long now on this, uh, so I think I'm going to maybe just uh, shorten them out a little bit. Maybe around there. Arms, uh, it's, um, I mean, there's a, it's interesting, uh, um, human proportions because there is usually, uh, you know, uh, six head uh, height and that sort of stuff. Uh, so um, proportions are roughly uh, identical or, or uh, similar from person to person, at least uh, for female, I have a specific proportion different than men, uh, longer legs usually, a shorter torso, uh, men have uh, longer arms, um, but um, but what's, uh, what's interesting is that even though there's a range, uh, they're pretty similar, there's still a range and some people just have long arms and short legs, it's just the way it is. The only thing that never ever varies from human to human, there's only one organ, one thing that never changes in humans. I wonder if you guys can guess what it could be. What never changes is always the same size for everyone. Uh, 
I'll let you think about it. Uh, I like the fact that our arms feel a bit uh, fat because uh, it's really a part of her too. Uh, I don't want to overdo it, but uh, you know, we we need to embrace uh, her uh, specific uh, features as well. Can't be too, uh, you know. That's it's just a part of the character, so it's it's fine to do. I think. This will change because now it's uh, it's too big. The proportions are not quite right. The angle might be a little uh, difficult to get, but we'll see. I guess that's not too bad. Still not the right shape, exactly the right shape. I have to. And I honestly would like to to have an, an axe. Uh, I think axes they're just a very uh, cool shapes and they're kind of scary. I like uh, like them in the you know horror movies and stuff. But um, but the axe is really in the in the book only. So I don't think it would be it would be good to uh, to mix them to mix up the uh, the movie and the and the book. Stephen King has a very uh, interesting uh, story. Um, generally, there's a, he wrote a book. Uh, it's called On Writing, um, and it's uh, really about writing. Uh, just simple as that. And uh, he tells about his experiences as a as a writer, um, and uh, gives us uh, some tips about uh, creative writing. But really, it's mostly about uh, uh, more about um, his experiences in life um, and uh, more than uh, you know a technical uh, shenanigans about uh, how to write properly and, um, and that makes it for a very uh, very fascinating book I really enjoyed it a lot and, um, um, and he tells that he had so so many uh, uh, crazy things happening to him uh, it's really insane he was born uh, very poor, um, I, mean, I mean, dirt poor, really crazy. Uh, his father left the uh, uh, household very, uh, he was uh, still uh, an infant, I think. And um, a mother, uh, his mother ended up uh, by herself with, uh, I think there were like uh, four kids or something like this. And she had to work uh, three, three jobs just to be able to uh, barely feed them. And they lived in a really, uh, uh, really bad conditions, like in absolute uh, poverty, uh, up until uh, very late. And uh, then he got, uh, became a teacher, um, and uh, uh, taught, uh, you know, English literature. And um, and he was still struggling quite a bit because a teacher, you know, you don't get uh, much money. Um, but he had this uh, objective of uh, becoming a, a writer. And um, his breakthrough was with um, his, his, his first uh, book that really uh, sort of uh, uh, launched him into a stardom was uh, uh, Carrie. Uh, I think he was 1974 or something. Um, and there's a pretty good story about that. He was. Uh, so he was writing, he had this idea of uh, this uh, schoolgirl with, um, you know, paranormal uh, sort of uh, kinetic powers uh, that uh, could not really uh, understand uh, and control them and would, um, uh, and that with her crazy mother, um, religious mother, um, you know, 
sort of a, a mistaking those powers from some manifestation of a you know a Satan or evil uh, uh, spirit. Um, but by the way, a theme that uh, is a constant keeps keeps coming back uh, with uh, uh, Stephen King the uh, the danger uh, of uh, religion becoming uh, um, you know a, a source of a uh, of a um, of dissension and discord rather than uh, than a good uh, positive uh, influence so uh, i mean whether you agree or not but uh, this is really i think uh, one of his uh, main uh, themes and uh, anyway so um, he was he, he so he had this idea about this uh, book for uh, for carrie and uh, and he he started to write it and he wrote for quite some time and then he had a um, he reached a point where um, he really hated uh, the book. He didn't like what he had uh, written, and he felt like uh, it was because he, d he didn't know uh, what a schoolgirl is. You know, he said, um, "I've never been. I'm, I've ne first, I'm not a girl. I've never been a schoolgirl. I don't know how they think. I don't know what they're interested in, and uh, and uh, I can't write about them. It's just." Um, and so he threw the. The manuscript away he had uh, written a, a large portion of it and he, uh, he just uh, threw it away in the trash and decided to start something else but uh, his wife uh, uh, dug it from the trash and started reading it if the story is true and she uh, th she really felt in love with it um, and she could see the the issues with the the fact that uh, he, he he didn't really uh, know a hundred percent his uh, subject matter in terms of uh, you know young girls and stuff like that, but uh, it was still a very compelling story. So she uh, she actually convinced him to keep writing, and she told him that she uh, had been a schoolgirl and she would uh, help him understanding them, uh, which is a really uh, cool thing that uh, she could do that you know. Uh, a, a really good support from his wife and uh, and it turns out that she had a really good instinct there because um, the book was an immense success um, it was a uh, uh, he got a uh, an advance on royalties for I think four hundred thousand dollars which was in the 70s uh, uh, a lot of money especially for a guy who had to struggle his entire life and uh, and from there um, uh, the rest is history. It became the most, uh, the the be the the most paid um, a writer in uh, the history of uh, of uh, the United States, um, and he was he's still one of the uh, the writers generating the most uh, income. I think right behind uh, um, J.K. Rowling's, I think uh, the the Harry Potter. Um, but he's, uh, he's he's right there, you know, not that far. He's a very uh, successful. I mean, he's not to her level, but he's in the top uh, still uh, to this day. And still uh, s sells a lot of uh, even the old book like The Stand and uh, the um, um, the uh, the Dark Tower, uh, It, all that stuff. They they even made a. Another movie of uh, it that I really enjoyed actually the the first part with the kids I think was really nice. I can't wait for the sequel the part two Be interested to see this But he had so many uh, struggles in his life and uh, really a difficult times so and he was uh, fell uh, into a really a uh, bad addiction uh, for many many years um he was uh he was uh, struggling with the uh, addiction to uh, alcohol and drugs and pretty much everything that was available to him he tried um and that uh, really um uh, uh, screwed him up uh, quite a bit and um uh, you know i mean that's uh, uh it's just uh, what uh, drugs uh, would do you know and um and he even uh, says in this uh, on writing book, he says that um, 
he had uh, written entire books like um, uh, Carrie and some others uh, under the influence uh, and that he can't even remember writing them. He was sort of uh, in an autopilot doing this. It's crazy. Um, um, I don't know how much uh, this is true, but uh, um, I uh, tend to believe him, you know. So, yeah, pretty nuts. Um, and it took him uh, years and years to uh, to come out of the uh, the addiction. He really struggled with it for a long time. And he even uh, acknowledged that um, uh, misery was about his uh, fight uh, to uh, escape and uh, recover from addiction. Uh, the character of uh, Annie Wilkes represented uh, the drugs to him. I wouldn't admit, uh, uh, for a long time, uh, people asked him uh, uh, if uh, what was the because there was always something very personal about uh, usually about what people write even when they write fiction and uh, people asked him uh, what was the personal was it uh, the, the the fear of uh, not to being able to write because it's about the writer was it uh, you know the writer block or was it about uh, his fear of uh, popularity of uh, fans or was it something else and he wouldn't uh, give an answer. Uh, he refused to talk about it for many years until he finally said that it was not that, but it was a, a, a representation of a, his a fight with the um, uh, addiction to the drugs. And he also uh, had some crazy, uh, uh, really bad um, luck, uh, incredible bad luck um, in uh, the uh, late, uh, I think it was in the, the 90s, end of the 90s, I think maybe, I can't remember the date, but um, uh, so uh, Stephen King, he lives, uh, he lives in Maine, in the city of uh, Bangor, uh, it's called Bangor in Maine, actually I want the, the, the game to take place uh, around the Bangor area, uh, just as an homage to Stephen King and the Maine, because uh, uh, Maine and uh, New England and all that stuff is uh, the place of uh, of witches and uh, and the place of uh, uh, many stories of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. So since I want to to have the, those uh, creatures, uh, interdimensional weird beings coming from another dimension. I kind of want to place this around the the New England area, um, but anyway. So uh, King, he was uh, living in. Um, he is. It's always lived uh, almost all his life in uh, this uh, region in this town of Bangor. He's very well known over there. People know him. They know where he lives, but they respect his uh, privacy. He's a very private guy. He doesn't uh, mix up uh, his uh, family with uh, with the business. And um, and one day, and he was uh, doing a, a strolls. You know, he was uh, just uh, doing long walks uh, on the um, around his uh, where he lived, just you know to to think about his writing and uh, just to take uh, some fresh air. And he was doing that. And he was uh, walking along the, the side of the road next to the woods, and. Um, and then there was um there was a guy who was driving a, a pickup truck and um and he had a dog uh, with him i think i think it was a dog and the dog was uh, acting out and uh, being a, a dog you know and he was uh, trying to um to um you know um, to calm down the dog or to make him stop and uh, so he wasn't uh, paying too much attention to the road and he uh, he hit um stephen king i uh, ran him over uh complete uh, by, completely by accident obviously he was not uh um it was not dui or anything it was just a stupid accident of a guy uh, not paying attention and uh, he hit uh, stephen king and uh, almost killed him it was a very very bad accident he got uh, uh, broken hips and punctured lung and all sorts of things. It took him uh, 
a month and even uh, years to fully recover from this. And I think to this day, he still a struggle sometimes with pain. Uh, so very, very bad accident. And there was even um, uh, a couple of, uh, there was a woman that was driving on that road with her uh, daughter, I think. And uh, in the region, everyone knows uh, Stephen King, you know, because they, uh, they're they used to see him. He's a uh, part of the town. And, uh, and apparently this uh, woman was uh, driving uh, on this road and uh, she told her uh, a passenger oh gosh uh, I think this is Stephen King walking down the, the road and uh, this this guy is uh, swerving a lot she saw the guy in the pick, pickup truck they were passing uh, each other and she said uh, wow this guy seems to swerve quite a bit I hope he's not gonna hit Stephen King a really weird prophetic uh, uh, statement you know and uh, very bizarre and uh and there's a, something a detail that's even more sordid and, and weird is that um uh, so the guy hit uh, stephen king but uh, he was uh, looking back so he didn't really uh, realize what he had hit and there's a lot of deer in the area so uh you know he assumed that he had hit the deer and he kept driving actually for a little while um and then um uh, there was blood on his windshield and his windshield was uh, broken and uh, and then he noticed that on his passenger seat there was a uh, there were glasses and that's how he realized that he had hit someone you know uh, really bizarre and uh, so he went back and uh, found Stephen King in the ditch uh, almost dead and called 911 and all that stuff very uh, very crazy <clears throat> and Stephen King uh, bought the truck after that he he, he bought the truck and he uh, he uh, he destroyed it himself with a sledgehammer and uh, made a and uh, had him uh, completely destroyed he bought it back from the guy <clears throat> so yes uh, Stephen King had a uh, a lot of um, um, hardships in his life and that's also what makes uh, sometimes uh, good authors you know because they had uh, had an interesting life sometimes and uh, and uh, through their experience they uh, they are able to uh, like he's very good about talking about uh, um, um, you know uh, families that are with uh, one single parent because he was uh, that was his case he's good about talking about addiction because he was uh, an addict for many years so i think all those uh these things you have to you kind of have to exploit as an uh, author even though uh, it must be uh, quite uh, difficult to be that personal but uh, um i think the the others, they, uh, they end up uh, very uh, naked. Uh, no more re-roll. No more roses. No more roses. No more, really. Okay. No more roses. Thank you for the follow. Thank you and welcome. Welcome here on this uh, little uh, pixel art stream. So if you're new here, um, and assume you are, um just to so you know what i'm doing is um i'm uh, making all those uh characters from uh movies uh, villains and heroes i've made a bunch already and um sorry guys for the ones that uh, keep hearing this uh, speech over and over again because uh, you know by now but i like uh, to uh, just introduce this a little bit for people who are new um, and so uh, my idea is I want to make a game that's sort of a survival um, uh, survival sort of turn-based strategy um, post-apocalyptic with like aliens and you know like uh, inv invading the world and all the heroes are, uh, are a bunch of uh, really uh, misfits from uh, all the different movies that uh, I loved uh, when I was a kid and I still love to this day uh, many movies from the, the 80s and the 70s and the idea is that uh, uh, you can uh, go and uh, 
you start the the game with one character it's sort of a roguelike uh, type of thing where you have to survive day to day and then you can meet uh, any of those people and uh, all of them you can actually recruit uh, or fight uh, there's no uh, npc so to speak that you can't uh, have in your team uh, that's the idea and also that the fact that uh, because they're so different uh, some of them are um, uh, intrinsically evil and some of them are good uh, and some are more neutral and uh, it's a very important uh, aspect of uh, how they're going to be able to uh, work together as a team um, I would like uh, uh, you to feel like um, and I was uh, sort of a bit inspired by Darkest Dungeon for this. Darkest Dungeons, you know, they have the quirks. Uh, some people develop uh, develop some uh, some uh, issues, you know, uh, paranoia or greed or whatever, and then uh, they become uh, they act uh, on their own, uh, even though they are you are within your team. You give them instructions, but they sometimes they just act on their own because uh, of their uh, you know their uh, obsession. And uh, that uh, sort of triggered uh, for me the idea of uh, going even further and uh, and seeing if uh, it's possible to make a game where you're never guaranteed that a uh, character will stay with you or that he won't turn against you. Um, so for instance, uh, I imagine you uh, you start and uh, you, have, um, you have Blondie there from uh, Good, the Bad and the Ugly and then you end up uh, recruiting uh, Mad Max and those two guys are pretty neutral, you know, they're not really good or bad. I guess the blondies are more good, but they're very independent, so they they would probably go along well. And then you hire um uh Dorothy, which is essentially very good, and then you got uh, Alien, the Xenomorph. And then this guy is pure aggression, pure instinct. And there's a chance that uh this guy might be really hard to to work with you might just uh, decide to turn on uh, one of the characters for no reason or um, and also there's the idea that um, let's say you have a team of uh, essentially good characters so let's say you have Rambo and then um, Indiana Jones Sarah Connor three of them and then all of a sudden you introduce uh, you introduce uh, let's see uh, maybe a really uh, evil one. Who could that be? More on a psychological. You introduce this guy, for instance, uh, Jack Torrance from uh, The Shining, or or Freddy Krueger. This guy is a sadistic guy, and so. Um, every time you'll have uh, meet new people or have some decisions to make as to whether we do that or that or we attack those people to steal their stuff or we just, uh, you know, we uh, try to trade with them or whatever. Uh, every good action that you make will uh, reinforce the team, the good people. But the bad ones, they'll see this as a sign of weakness and they may be tempted to uh, to leave, you know. And uh, since he would be uh, uh, outnumbered by the three other or four other good people, there's a chance that he would just leave all altogether, and uh, and then he would leave during the night. So the next day, uh, the new uh, sort of day day of a uh, uh, game day starts, and uh, and he's gone, you know, with all his possessions and everything that he had on him. And then so you always have to sort of uh, judge if someone uh, would. Uh, would uh, do something like this and um and uh, if uh let's say if uh, it's a bunch of uh, evil characters three or four of them and there's one good then there then at that point there is a chance that either the good will leave the team when you do uh, bad stuff or that uh they will kill him you know and uh there'll be a fight where you have to um basically uh uh, just uh, watch the fight unfold between the the members of your team. So it's a bit crazy as an idea, but uh, I'm curious to see where that would go. Um, uh, and also, uh, 
uh, it's it's really nothing serious by the way it's all uh, humorous and uh, it's obviously a parody you know there's a it makes no sense uh, at all to have uh, all those characters uh, mixed up in uh, one world it doesn't really uh, make any sense i don't even try to explain it or justify it it's just the way it is it's just a, a pure uh, sort of a, a parody and that you have to accept it for what it is but uh, i love the idea also of uh, interesting and um and unpredictable synergies between the uh, characters that uh, seem so uh, far apart from each other but for some reason because they have uh, skills that are complementary or then they could uh, make a good team and uh, have uh, some interesting synergies and i've been very ins a lot of uh, mainly inspired by uh, uh, the binding of eyesight for uh, the fact that uh, you uh, uh, the game is not too long to run it's a very it's a fairly short there are fairly short runs uh, I wouldn't make an action game. It's still it's the idea is the same uh, that uh, you make fairly sm uh, f short games, uh, but there um, but there's always a really good interest in uh, re-rolling and uh, re-running the game over and over because you uh, keep after I mean Isaac. Some people have played a thousand hours and they still find new interesting synergies and things they haven't seen. It's really crazy, uh, and uh, so I was very uh, much inspired by this. And from the moment for the moment to moment gameplay, I'm inspired by a, a board game called uh, Robinson Crusoe that I really love. Um, that uh, forces you to make the best of a team of different people and uh, try and survive and uh, make the right decisions. And it's always uh, you always feel like uh, you have to make the hard calls, and uh, it's always uh, uh, making the least uh, uh, dangerous or the least bad choice you know there's never you never feel like there's a really good choice there's always a sense of risk and a sense of uh, things are just going to turn uh, really bad um quite a stressful game to play for a board game it's pretty incredible how uh, um really um, um compelling and uh, it is uh, i really love it and so um i think it would be sort of a mix of those uh, two things hopefully And I have other ideas in terms of uh, how I want to treat um, the inventory and the team. Um, but uh, this I can't really talk about it right now because uh, the idea is still in the inception and I might uh, change my mind and I want to try and uh, prototype at some point in uh, Unity, see how it goes, you know. There's really only way, it's the only way to, to test a um, uh, concept. Uh, on paper it's it's always nice you know but uh, uh when you make it you oftentimes you realize that uh, uh it's not really uh, uh great uh, it just doesn't work as a functioning design uh it's just an idea um i think i'm gonna have a bit more falls there um just for scale because uh i can afford it uh, in the very small version, I couldn't do that because there was not enough uh, pixels. But uh, here I can, I think I can do a little bit of that. Won't have to be all the same size, you know, but uh, a bit of variation is nice. <coughs> I think I'll uh, also push the contrast because uh, we want them to, they want to see them a little more so we'll, uh, we'll do that eventually <clears throat> so yeah lots of uh, work that uh, uh, that I have uh, in front of me uh, a really big uh, endeavor there I hope I can um, stick to it and be uh, determined and uh, patient enough to uh, actually uh, uh, see it to completion. I uh, really uh, hope that I can do that. Um, but I'm very well aware of uh, how this is uh, it's difficult, you know, to uh, when you're by yourself. Um, I've done this in the past already. 
uh, back in the 90s <coughs> but I think at the time uh, games were generally simpler and um, the bar was not that high in terms of uh, what uh, uh, the expectations of people uh, even uh, from the uh, indie or for very small teams now uh, people they don't really care if uh, you're an indie developer or if, or if you're a big studio they have high expectations for everyone and every game and rightly so I mean it's just the way it is you know so you you have to I think you have to be aware of that you can't just uh, be a uh, complacent uh, otherwise uh, you're just going to be completely ignored and even if you're really good, there's a chance that you're going to be ignored anyway. It's just the nature of things. There's a, a component that is uh, just uh, how well in sync you are with the society, and how, uh, in uh, you know, and sometimes people things come too early or too late, and they don't connect with the audience, and that's fine. You know, it's just uh, you have to accept it. Um, so I'm uh, well aware of that, but I think uh, you uh, at least. Uh, you ought to yourself to uh, make the best thing that you can uh, because um, there's not going to be a second chance you know you really uh, have to push for for excellence uh, if possible uh, and I'm not saying that uh, I'm gonna succeed in doing this obviously I'm just saying that this is a uh, I feel like this is um, pretty essential um, if you if you want to tackle this sort of stuff when you look at uh, ga indie games nowadays and uh, the quality is just uh, through the roof you know uh, became uh, so impressive over the years um, and I think it's partly due to the fact that uh, uh, we evolve as a game uh, creators so to speak I think we uh, the, the the game um, how I could call this you know the science or the 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 craftsmanship uh, is uh, evolving a lot uh, it's like uh, movies you know uh, rules uh, start uh, what works and what doesn't starts to be a little more um, understood by a lot of uh, designers and um, and so generally uh, there's a lot more um, uh, there's a, uh, the quality is uh, is already uh, higher there to start with and uh, and on top of that the technology is uh, helping uh, a lot to uh, alleviate some of the really uh, complex situation that you can end up to uh, if you're doing something by yourself and you look at unity which uh, is uh, the one that uh, i will most likely use um it's uh it's quite remarkable uh, how what you can do with this thing it's uh, it's really crazy uh, i was uh, i was uh, very impressed when I saw what people do with that, and um, and uh, even the very small teams, you know, uh, you could potentially create an entire game uh, in Unity without uh, almost without a single line of code, you know. Uh, not that I would do that because I, I still am gonna need to go a little more low level than that, I think. But uh, but I think if you're really uh, allergic to uh, to code, you could you could still uh, probably uh, manage to do something, um, and three D is not a problem anymore. You don't have to write uh, this these uh, complex three uh, uh, D algorithm. You don't have to write uh, your now physics is not a problem. You, it used to be very complicated to do a game where physics was involved, but now you have physics engines that are readily available. So. Um, yeah, it's just so it's such a massive, massive improvement in uh, over the years in uh, in game uh, and technology available to uh, authors, you know, and uh, and game uh, designers. I'm uh, very glad about that. Actually, I think it's awesome. Um, so I'm actually very optimistic about. Uh, I think um, I've, I've heard quite a few people being. Uh, Especially uh, my generation, the sort of uh, old school guys being a bit more um, a bit more a, a bit better about the game industry, you know, I think that uh, it has evolved, uh, it became too much of a of a cold business, you know um, 
and there's a, there's truth to that i think but uh, at the same time um i think we've never been in a better position uh to make things uh, that are really uh, uh high quality and uh, that you can do uh, by yourself and uh, and there's never been more platforms to to um to allow your to communicate directly with your with your audience and uh, you can uh, uh, short circuit the whole uh, system of a publisher and uh, and uh, you know uh, distributor and all that stuff now for the most part so um that is a big deal to me so i think uh, and plus there's like things like unity that allow you to do things that uh, you couldn't even dream of doing uh, by yourself a few years ago so so i think we've never been in a better position actually uh, as uh, i think uh, someone who wants to create a game nowadays is uh, in a way better position that uh, than we used to be back then and uh, there's a chance that it will make a much better game in general that than uh, the stuff that we used to make i think um i mean it could be could be wrong but uh, i think quality has improved not uh, didn't go back uh, and i think uh, generally uh, any game right now that comes out is uh, on average uh, better than anything that uh, was done uh, 30 years ago you know with uh, some exceptions obviously it's not it's not like all everything is like this but So I'm really, uh, anyway, the point was I'm really excited that I'm able to go back into uh, trying to make something uh, on my own and uh, see if, uh, uh, see if uh, I have a, the chance uh, to make it work, you know, I, uh, I, I don't know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll mess up, you know, but um, I'm going to give it a uh, a lot of uh, effort and try to respect the uh, respect the game and uh, respect the people that are uh, hopefully uh, gonna play kind of play it you know and we'll see if uh, we'll see if this works I wonder if uh, it's better with a bit more brow or her. let's go back From here to there. Yeah, I think it might be better, right? It doesn't have a lot. I mean, she's not like. It seems like it's a bit too, uh, it's a bit too much volume there on the hair. I think I'll probably commit to this. But anyway, that was a kind of a longer um, digression there, but uh, that's what I'm doing <laughs> uh, in a nutshell, uh, or try to do. And I'm very early uh, because, um, I mean, I'm doing a bit of art and I haven't uh, started prototyping. I have, I think, a good idea of what I want, would like the game to be, but um, like I said, I need to... Uh, going to uh, prototyping before I can pretend uh, um, that uh, that it's, this is it's what it's going to be. Very, uh, very tricky job. There's, uh, what I like about video games too is that um, there is so many things that you can convey in a game um, because uh, of uh, interactivity, but uh, and also uh, the medium is uh, combines everything, you know, uh, um, music, sound effects, and animation. <clears throat> when you think of it, it's like a, um, it's like mixing of, um, you know, cartoon and animation, an animation feature that tells a story, if you want, with a, uh, you know, with a, a game, and uh, and you can mix this with uh, um, some. Uh, almost like an abstract uh, 
uh, art form you, you can there's so many directions in which you can go and all of the things uh, you have to take care of uh, yourself um, so it's a very interesting and there's I don't think there's many um, Uh, many um, um, expression forms. I don't know how to call this. I hate to say art because art doesn't mean much to me. Um, but uh, I will say uh, there's not that many uh, ways you can express something um, that allow you uh, so much uh, um, actual uh, um, uh, freedom and uh, and interesting uh, unique uh, approaches I think it's very uh, it's, it's a really good thing Now uh, little buttons. <clears throat> um, think of all proportions and um, everything seems uh, more or less. I think maybe a little less. Uh, I think this could oh, this could go a little high. Oh, hold on. A little higher, I think. Um, that's a bit more severe, you know, a little, a little shorter neck. I feel like it's a bit more. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably better to do that. I have to change this a bit. I think that might be that might be okay. Gonna lift a little bit the uh, the breast now. Seems to be too low. Um, okay. <clears throat> so um. I guess at this point I could start. Uh, I think I'm uh, close enough in terms of the uh, proportions and uh, the main uh, block out. I think is done now. Um, so I think you can start uh, refining things a little bit. Um, there's really not that much. Uh, um, I feel like also I want to uh, get this uh, impression that uh, we have less uh, folds, the folds get bigger as uh, we uh, come down. So that's the last thing I'm going to try and change. And then after that, uh, just refine things. We'll check on scale really quickly, just to make sure. I think that seems about right. Let's see. Yeah, that seems okay. Mm. Jessica Rabbit is a very tall. So, but yeah, I think it's okay. Two really um, scary nurses are right next to each other. I think I'm okay with that. So um, <coughs> we'll um, going to address this little uh, issue there that I mentioned first, and then we'll uh, we'll start uh, refining things a little bit.
So I forgot to give you the answer to what uh, what is it that doesn't uh, never changes uh, in size from human to human, and it's the eyeball. The eyeball is always the same size for everyone. I'm going to add one more value, I think. Um, I mix them just to find the proper color. I think we'll change. Uh, Get a bit more green. Maybe, maybe something like this might be a little too much. Let's see. So, in a case like this, uh, what you could do uh, for lighting is a, uh, um, it's uh, what we call the. Um, in a, in a, in character drawing or painting, it's called what you call a sculptural lighting, and that means that you uh, you don't really uh, have a a light a key light coming from a direction, um, but it's more like uh, every shape is uh, lit from uh, independently from the top in order to uh, emphasize its uh, its form. Um, so it's sort of a it's a bit an, of an uh, unrealistic lighting. Or, but um, it's almost like uh, if you if you look at things uh, outside, uh, you know, in uh, under a very uh, soft light, uh, in, uh, over, uh, overcast or something. Um, so uh, in a case like this, you kind of want to light uh, this independent from this from this to kind of feel the form of every uh, fold. Uh, here I would light it uh, from the top a little bit to emphasize this form and uh, here I would light uh, maybe uh, this arm and then leave this in shadow. It's kind of like on a case by case um, basis, you know. And for fabric, I tend to have a bit of um, anti-aliasing. I don't like to have. Uh, if you look at most of the, the stuff that I'm doing, there's no, uh, the, there's not a lot of anti-aliasing. I tend to leave the the a, the uh, uh, the sharp uh, pixel and all the uh, uh, the edge uh, very uh, very sharp. Not too worried about it. It's uh, really depends on people. Um, um, I don't I don't mind really the pixelated look as long as it's uh, under control and uh, um, it has a certain uh, sharpness that I like um, and uh, it sort of embraces the, the sort of uh, the pixel art you know um, but uh, I feel like for fabric uh, it tends to be uh, it's more of a trying to convey a softer material 
and in that case I try not to have uh, too many um, uh, stronger uh, aliasing you know so I'll uh, I'll fix it a bit if I uh, if I can Some of the falls to uh, to meet and uh, and turn into one. If I can do that. Here I will light more from this side because. Uh, you seem that the light wraps around a little bit, you know, so. And I will probably have a bit of a, of a shadow from, uh, from the axe, just to separate um, the axe a little bit. Keep it simple because I'm um, tend to be a bit messy. We need a uh, more, a bit uh, more colors there. <coughs> I to have too many values, but I. Uh, in a case like this, um, it's hard to get the volume without uh, adding a bit of a color, you know, uh, different uh, your values, uh, a bit more uh, progressive than uh, Mm. 
Yeah, I really need the extra value there. It's too harsh otherwise. And then um, I don't want to uh, to put any pressure on anyone, obviously. So uh, feel free to. Um, I'm happy that you're here, uh, even if you lurk, even if you uh, uh, you know there for a few minutes. Uh, I'm um, I'm really grateful that uh, for every person that is here, listening to me a little bit. Uh, but if you feel like uh, you have uh, questions or you want to share something, uh, feel free to do so in the chat. There's really no uh, forbidden uh, question or there's no rule or or anything. It's a uh, very. Uh, I hope uh, we can make this space a very uh, free and uh, and uh, and uh, and simple and genuine. And just uh, have fun, uh, talk about um, the things that we like, you know, uh, whether it is uh, uh, just a very uh, technical uh, aspect of pixel art, or it can be uh, movies that you, you you like, or or games, or whatever you want. You can uh, you can share your own art if you want, and uh, we can talk about it if you have ideas. No, I think I'm gonna leave it clean. Mm. So, uh, kind of slowly getting there. If I really want to have a shadow there, I think it's a bit uh, too um, too pronounced. I don't think uh, the lighting justifies this. It's too soft to uh, really justify a big shadow there. I think we're going to keep it. Uh, and it's uh, such a different value anyway that there's really no conflict um, between the two. They overlap really well. Doesn't uh, really uh, need to be. Uh, So I think we're fine. Then after that, I have the. I need to make the misery the pig, so I do forget about that.
I'll go uh, quickly on the arms. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, usually I tend to do this. The sum uh, will go darker. Because it's, uh, you know, in the back. This, this arm will be a little lighter. And, um, and also we'll have uh, a bit uh, less lighting in the, the top because this arm will uh, it will uh, give the impression that the, this arm is bent uh, forward you know towards the camera because it's getting a little bit more top light so it's uh, usually good uh, good thing to just uh, get a bit of uh, lighting in uh, in the arm <clears throat> and here I think we'll just do something uh, Something fairly simple, just uh, maybe just a few, um, a few folds, you know. Often tempted to add more than necessary, like uh, I tend to like uh, lighting when it's very uh, clear and simple. Only a couple of uh, clean shapes that are emphasized, and that's it. this I don't think it's very necessary actually Just a suggestion of lighting, not much. Couple of folds, and that's it. Okay, um, I think now we should probably uh, try to make a bit more contrast between the the sleeves and the uh, and and uh, the, the sort of uh, dress. Um, so let me uh, get the green, and we'll uh, take care of that first. So what I do is that I copy um, all the green on top on the different layer, like this. So now I can uh, adjust this. So we'll uh, crank the saturation a bit. We'll go uh, lighter. And I think the hue, we're going to go a little more. I 
and this is a very uh, strong light and this is more like a, a very uh, very soft so uh, true colors are probably somewhere in between very hard to to tell uh, so um, I'll just uh, use a common sense there I'm gonna increase the contrast so we see the lighting a little bit more uh, but now this is too saturated so we'll go less lighting a bit more I don't want saturation to go, uh, you know, out of control. But, uh, and uh, I will do the opposite there. I'm going to select um, everything uh, that is dress. This one might be easier to do like this Oops. Got it all. So, same thing. Actually, here, forgot a line there. So, we'll take, uh, we'll take this. I think I'm gonna also Increase contrast overall. And uh, come down in saturation quite a bit. See if we can uh, you know, actually, ah, uh, this is a mess there. Let me get this cleaner. I just want to keep this uh, simple. There's uh, way too much stuff. Sometimes you um, just have to make the admit that uh, there is uh, not much that you need. Just have to make it clean, and that's it. You know. I think I was uh, trying too hard there. We'll make this simpler. Everything is just way simpler. Looks a bit dirty with all those different values.
It's a bit more tedious in here, that's all. Kind of want a clean slate there because I didn't like it where it was going. Actually, um, maybe push the lighting from one side and have a one side a bit darker um, instead of the, doing a, you know what I was mentioning about sculptural lighting and going for lighting that would be specific to each of all. I think uh, in fact we're gonna um, push a bit more form in the entire thing. Probably a better idea. I think it's better. Oop. I think it's, uh, it's preferable to do that. A bit darker on this side, <clears throat> like that. We'll go like brownish. This gets more lighting overall. Yeah, this this works uh, way better. I like this better. It's a better, cleaner read on it. Sometimes uh, you don't want to. Uh, force things, you know, um, just keep them simple. Um, love a little, um, little shadow there. How come I can't? Oh, I know why. Wrong layer. Yes, it's a uh, better, cleaner. And okay, so here we're gonna go. <clears throat> Have a shadow there. Something simple too. Yeah. I 
collapse this to this. Actually, hold on. Maybe not yet. Because, um, make sure that uh, palette is consistent first. And then we'll be good. For a second, just want to make sure that uh, I have a consistent pattern. Same, same thing. We'll go a bit more light on this side, just just to give her a bit more, um, a bit more shape. Nothing too fancy, but just uh, just a bit more form. No need to do a uh, crazy uh, fancy stuff. Okay, um, so this could be, I think it's not too bad as a card. Now I can uh, probably uh, a bit of contrast, it'll still look okay because cause it's cleaner. So it's not a million edges and stuff. Yeah, it's better with a bit more contrast. Those buttons get too dark, but uh, we'll fix this. I'm gonna fix this now. This. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, getting close now, um, I still think that uh, this uh, arm there, we could go, um, we could go quite a bit darker. So we'll try this, just to have more, um, just a bit more. Uh, form again. Like so. Okay, so now we can commit all that stuff to one. Okay, seems all right. We can have a bit of a <clears throat> slight sense of uh, lighting on that axe. Wonder how far I can push this. Let's 
seems about right. Sledgehammer is pretty uh, particular shape. I think we want to um, really uh, get that sort of a <coughs> round face on top. This really makes the, this uh, very uh, characteristic, you know. And then just a little kink there, but I don't know if, if I'm able to do that. Might be really difficult. We have to keep this simple, probably, to a bit concerned with the angle. Doesn't seem quite right. It's always uh, problematic, those angles for the weapons and uh, all these uh, things that are supposed to be very um, straight, perfect, you know. <clears throat> they look always a little funky if you can't get the perfect uh, angle for them and oftentimes you, you you can't really huh you may have to do a bit of a cheat there Probably okay. Mm. Like if I can uh, just build lighting on the hand. Very, very light. I can't really force this too much. <coughs> mm. So something uh, very important now is the the cross. So um, obviously can't can't really make. Um, the cross is going to be uh, too big, so we'll see what we can do. I think it's going to be uh, probably end up just being uh, a suggestion of it. We'll see, but just a glint. This is uh, one of those uh, where uh, the, uh, the the pixels are the enemy. The absolute enemy of the people. <laughs> so you have to, for something like this, it's better to go a uh, little gradient and go very, uh, what you want to uh, look thin, uh, you want less contrast, so closer to the, the color of uh, the shirt there, and what you want to be a bit more. Uh, uh, bigger you want uh, more contrast so we can all and then here we can go for a strong glint think like this and this uh, kind of uh, gives you a uh, an impression that uh, it's a uh, very shiny you know that's kind of uh, what we're after can't really uh, do a lot more than that but it's just the idea, you know. I think it's fine. So, um, oops, wrong. Uh, fix this a bit. 
Make sure it's all clean and consistent now. Just want to make sure that uh, I don't mess up things too much. Try to like to have, um, if possible, um, you know, um, fairly clean, uh, fairly clean palette and everything, if I can. If we can make a, a fall there, it would be a kind of a bit more of a like this, a bit more like an angle, you know. I don't know. We can always try. You can go a little less dark in the shadow there. So this looks a bit uh, more more in shadow. I don't really like uh, It's uh, too um, too strong there. Let me fix this real quick. Hmm. It's, it's better like this. I want it to feel like a, it's still one piece, you know, so it's not like there's a belt or anything. I think this, uh, this feels a little better.
something like that. <clears throat> Okay, um, let me try something real quick. Yeah, hello. There's no real choice there. Okay. Um, what else do we need? I think uh, she's about to uh, done. Shoes. Sledgehammer. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. So, yeah, this 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 uh, this is not right. It's too blue. Gonna deset this quite a bit. And uh, we're going to uh, increase the contrast. No, why it's getting this blue color? Painting in color mode to make sure that uh, this doesn't is need too blue. I have to uh, cheat a little bit because um, it looks blue because everything is so brown that uh, by comparison your eye tends to creates this illusion that uh, this gets blue, but it's uh, so you have to be, add a bit of red in it in order to uh, to make it look a bit more neutral. So I think that's it for uh, for her. And uh, now it's a question of uh, yeah, I think we don't forget anything. So now I get my reference for misery. There. Uh, so I found um, the 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 breed of uh, of pigs. It's uh, called Tamworth pigs. Apparently, I think they come from Ireland, and uh, they have a nice uh, little uh, face. I like them. Look at this guy. Seems pretty relaxed. It's crazy that you had to. Uh, I wonder how this uh, this went with this uh, big fellow there. They can uh, weight uh, up to four hundred pounds. It's crazy. I was reading an article about a guy who uh, he got one when he was a kid. Uh, not uh, the, the the pig was a little piglet. He got it when he was a uh, you know like a baby. He, you know they're adorable when they were little little uh, piglets. So he kept it. He was uh, living in a house with a backyard, and he figured, you know, uh, he had heard that pigs were a quite sensitive creature, actually, uh, which is true. Very intelligent creature, and uh, and they can be a uh, good um, pets. So he figured, uh, I'll have a pig for a pet, you know, rather than uh, than a dog or a cat. That'll be that'll be nice. So he kept uh, the pig and. Um, for many years and uh, the pig uh, got bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, then uh, cows uh, started to uh, ensue because um, 
he could not uh, really uh, realize how strong he was and I uh, started to uh, really uh, cause a lot of damage in the house uh, you know he would just uh, because uh, he, he wouldn't understand that he was not uh, uh, you know uh, 10 pounds anymore like he was when he was a baby so he would uh, still climb on the on the beds and and you know he would uh, go on the tables and basically you bring uh, the whole table with him and stuff I mean crazy stuff like uh, really a bull in a china shop and on top of that you uh, started to develop some uh, uh, aggressive behavior because um, you know is they're, they're not made to be uh, living in a house with people in the end uh, they're just uh, they're still animals and uh, it was uh, it was not uh, he was not doing very well and um, and one day he felt like uh, the pig uh, he had this uh, vision this horror vision of the pig uh, uh, mauling uh, or killing his wife when he was away you know which could have happened really because he was strong and enough uh, to kill a human uh, very easily and um, and so he uh, he decided to get rid of it and uh, he got uh, he brought it to a farm or, or and uh, they they gave her I think it was a female they gave her a little piglet so that she could be a, some, some sort of a mom for and apparently that relaxed her a lot and she became a much more quiet and uh, and then she ended her, her life with this uh, little uh, adopted uh, pig in a in a field so it's a pretty good story overall uh, with a happy hand uh, but it's crazy how strong those things are um, I was a friend he was working on a f uh, I had a friend working on a farm and he had a really big uh, very big pigs and he was telling me that uh, one day uh, one of the pigs um, got into the house and he found and they, they, were, they had something cooking in a pressure cooker so you know what those things are they're like big fun thing and uh, they resist to pressure you know you close them and you hear the hissing from the pressure when you want to do steam vegetables and stuff like that and he found the pressure cooker and he, and he, he, he took it and then he proceeded to uh, destroy it in a uh, in the hope of getting what's inside because he was smelling the, the vegetables and he actually uh, bent the uh, with his uh, you know his uh, uh, um, uh, teeth and really uh, just uh, by biting it he, he actually bent a, a pressure cooker so you can imagine this just a sheer strength of this thing to be able to do that it's, it's just unimaginable so uh, yeah I wouldn't I already wouldn't mess up with the with them they're, uh, they're kind of cute but uh, you know you never know I think you get to respect <laughs> you gotta respect nature for what it is in the end so anyway we're gonna try and make this guy so uh, this uh, was the old pig um couldn't make it uh, quite right and uh, but it was just like remember this was the small scale so uh we're gonna redo uh, this for sure um and i wonder what kind of i kind of like when he's bent like this i could have him uh, standing but just his head turned like this could be uh could be interesting um i really like when he's got uh, his face up like this too it's really funny the big ears are really cute um but I don't know if I can make this uh, pose uh, head up uh, with him standing on the ground. That might be a that might be a little uh, weird. So I'm not sure if I can do that. Um, and really, the iconic uh, shape is uh, from the side. There's this really interesting uh, arc there. That's uh, and the the groin there. The the uh, uh yeah so that's like the nose with this curve there so i think that's really the iconic thing but it's really not interesting to uh, have the pig uh, side uh you know on a side view i think he needs to be a little bit three quarter otherwise i'm afraid he's not gonna fit with her so we'll um so i guess we'll uh just start from scratch and see what we can do um this might be good too I wonder if I can start 
from there. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep much of it, honestly. Um, uh, We're going to try and uh, make something out of this. Um, I have the feeling that uh, uh, this might not be uh, easy to do because um, um, I felt I feel like when you're um, you know when you paint I've I've, I've made a bunch of uh, humans now uh, or humanoid creatures uh, quite a quite a lot and I've made uh, quite a lot of environments and not not only in pixel but in all forms of illustration and stuff in my career so you end up uh, with a sort of a um, an understanding uh, of uh, of what uh, a human being is and you know an environment and stuff like that so a building and and it's uh, it becomes a bit uh, more natural to do it so you don't it's not like a discovery but uh, a pig is a is such a creature that you don't get to do often that I feel like uh, it can be very uh, challenging to capture what a pig, why a pig looks like a pig, you know. Um, you really have to um, put a lot of, um, like, uh, you have to analyze things and be very uh, practical about the approach, I think. Really look at things and observe what, uh, what are the proportions and the, different things so it it could be um uh, it could be actually a bit more complicated than uh than we think it's going to be. Actually, uh, he seems to have a, such a dark nose there. Probably need to do the same. So we'll try to make him work as, as, as best as we can. Might uh, take a bit of time to get right, hopefully uh, not too long. I can also take a few uh, liberties with the uh, things as long as uh, they uh, look like a pig. And sometimes you want to uh, Make sure that you deliver on uh, the expectation that people have a, of a certain thing rather than a real, the stick to a pure uh, reality because uh, sometimes reality is actually not really uh, um, the best. Um, it's not something that uh, people uh, know very well actually, especially for, for a creature that is a bit more abstract. And then uh, you end up with uh, people uh, thinking that uh, you made uh, mistakes when uh, you uh, try to be actually faithful to uh, a real uh, thing but uh, because they don't know it they um they uh, they will uh, not understand some of the choice you've made and they'll uh, tell you that you made a mistake or they just won't understand what it is like i had this uh this um this uh, anecdote i i i told you um i told a uh, last time about uh, the xenomorph um, which is uh, this guy uh, an alien and you know everyone uh, knows this guy probably and um, and I was telling uh, 
uh, people here that um, originally I had made him uh, with the um, I can show you um, if I still have uh, this version Yeah, so um, I had made him more like uh, this, um, where um, you could see the the skull through uh, the sort of uh, uh, translucent head. You know, because there is a skull underneath the real thing in the movie, and uh, in all movies actually, but you can barely see it. Uh, if if you can see it at all, especially in the first movie, <clears throat> and so people don't uh, generally, if they're not a pure alien fans, they don't know that there is a skull made out of bone underneath that looks very much like human skull in here, uh, with the eye orbits and the nose, and uh, then it turns into some sort of a s big spine that are all into one big skull with a with a very humanoid uh, skull at the the here at the tip and um, and you can see it clearly through and uh, people uh, most people don't know that so when i did this um they uh, they actually told me uh why why would you make uh why would you make this thing you know it's, it's weird you have uh, you have him with uh, some sort of a uh, weird uh, skull underneath what's going on and uh, and i was telling him that this is a uh, what the alien is, you know, this is true to uh, the design, but because they they don't they don't know it, they can't you know you can't blame them. They just don't know. So for them, it's uh, it's not what they expect. So they they, they consider it uh, wrong, you know. And um, and since you can't be uh, every uh, single person that's gonna play the game or whatnot or see the image when you're doing something. Um, Sometimes you have to um, deliver on the expectations and knowing that uh, it's not necessarily the most accurate thing, but that's what uh, people expect to see. Um, and it's not, uh, I don't think it's, uh, I don't mean by that that you need to compromise a vision, um, but I think it's, um, it's more about being aware of uh, the perception that people have of something. Because the perception is reality in the end, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, for the longest time, I also didn't know that there was a skull underneath. It's only when I bought the Giger books and I started to get interested in all this that I realized that, oh yeah, well, what is this? There's, there's a, a skull. I never knew, you know. And uh, and so I kind of remembered that and I figured uh, that uh, uh, maybe... Um, you know, I have to be a little more um, um, forgiving, you know, with people because uh, they really, uh, they just don't know it. There's, for the most part, there's no way they know. And, um, and, and doing the alien this way is not really, um, uh, you know, enough, uh, like, a, it, it's still the alien. You, you're, you're not, I'm not uh, changing, uh, I make a choice that make it look more like what people saw in the movie. Because in the end, in the movie, that's what they saw. They saw it without the skull. They never knew and they couldn't see it because it was just not visible on screen. So um, so then the design, the true perception, the true design in the film is really without the skull when you think of it. So I had to change this. And... Um, and the point of all this was that uh, uh, it's the same thing with a with a, um, a creature like this. Uh, you may uh, make something that uh, is uh, more accurate to the proportions of a real pig, but uh, that will uh, not look very piggish for some reason. And then uh, in that case, it's it's better to um, to stick to the, uh, the the right impression. I think, if that makes sense. It's 
kind of a delivering on the, on expectations, you know. that people have of something. It's crazy. In all my search, I couldn't find a single uh, picture of a, a pig standing at three-quarter front. It's uh, really bizarre. Um, like uh, if uh, almost uh, they never look good from that angle, so people tend to take them uh, from the side rather than the front. And that may be just a case of, again, uh, you know, people take the picture that they uh, perceive as the more piggish picture. And that's uh, the, the nice big round uh, you know, uh, shape from the from the side. A bit like a uh, hyena or something. <laughs> a bit worried now. If needs nose needs to be smaller, maybe in the face. <laughs> Probably. About the the pig in the, uh, the the original book or the original idea for for the book, um, Annie Wilkes uh, she had um, you know she has a whole plan to um, for for this uh, this story. Uh, she knows that uh, she can't uh, possibly keep uh, Paul Sheldon forever in the house. Uh, that uh, she's going to be discovered at some point. So she knows that you know and. Um, and so she has um, uh, foreseen this, and uh, and she is ready for for that day. Um, and in the film, uh, she wants to um, do a uh, you know a murder, suicide, and kill her, kill him, like shoot him, and then uh, and then shoot herself. Um, but in the book, uh, at least in the original. Uh, um, first uh, draft. Um, yeah, Stephen King he had her. Um, she she um, she f she fed him to uh, misery uh, to the pig. He ate uh, the the <laughs> the author. She wanted to uh, uh, she wanted to uh, to have her feed uh, the author to the pig and then uh, remove his skin. And then bind uh, the book that he had written, the last uh, misery book that he, uh, she had forced him to write during the entire film or story. Uh, she would bind it in his uh, own skin and she would call it uh, Annie Wilkes' first edition. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really uh, crazy stuff. Huh? 
pretty insane. Yeah, Stephen King, pretty crazy guy. He's uh he's something else. I don't like everything that is uh, written, to be uh, very honest. I think uh, some of it is better than others. But I guess you could uh, say that from any uh, artist or, or whatever, you know. You, you always have uh, ups and downs and things that uh, uh, were you, you felt more connected with. And um, so there are things that he did that I really uh, enjoyed and some of this that like I was kind of scratching my head a little bit uh, was uh, why you would uh, you know write this um, <clears throat> very short legs um, little feet It's going to be hard to make uh, the legs nice because since they need to be super uh, um, fairly thin at the t at the bottom, um, you know, you end up with like one pixel, and it's always a little underwhelming. But at least the saving grace is that there's a nice tapering, so I think we could uh, take advantage of that maybe. Again, that not that many pixels we can use, you know. So it was a kind of a issue there. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what to do for the feet. It's really this uh, sort of like I was mentioning about uh, not having a um, for the games um, the idea that uh, there's no uh, proper uh, answer sometimes is just uh, taking uh, the less uh, uh, the approach that is the last, uh, least bad, you know, and uh, pixel as a pixel art, I think there's a lot of that going on, where you just have to, you know, resign to the fact that, uh, just admit to the fact that uh, uh, there's no uh, real good uh, solution there, and uh, you just have to Okay, so now definitely on the small side. I think, I mean, the head is. I'd be right. I feel like the body is too small. So. Like, head is smaller than uh, in the body. Like, his head seems very big compared to the body. So I think uh, we need to. Uh, Make sure that uh, like 
exactly know how, but uh, the body needs to be bigger. <clears throat> I don't remember how, how, how high he is. I don't think they were very high though. I think they're pretty low on ground, but they're long. Yeah. They have a long body. But they're pretty low on ground, I think. I mean, I'm a city boy. I've seen maybe uh, three pigs in my entire life, and uh, they were uh, behind bars, you know. So it's not like I can really. Uh, I don't have good reference there. Can't say that I've uh, that I've seen a lot of those. I like them though. They're nice. I like those uh, big uh, creatures. I generally like the big animals that look a little bit goofy. Um, like uh, my uh, f one of my favorite uh, creatures on Earth is uh, called the uh, capybara. It's a, it's the biggest uh, rodent in in on Earth. It's really enormous. It looks like a pig, but it's a it's the same family as a squirrel. Um, let me show you this crazy thing. Yeah, the square nose is so hilarious. And they live in uh, South America, Colombia mainly. And they, um, yeah, look at that. It's like a giant, a giant guinea pig, but it's really big. And they have this really square, this really weird square nose, the little guys there are really funny. Um, yeah. See, it's like a, a crossing between a beaver and, uh, and, uh, and a guinea pig it's <laughs> it's a very bizarre creature but look at big how big they are look at this guy this is crazy look at them and they're always like that always super relaxed <laughs> they never seem to worry about anything they lo look at look at that <laughs> they love water they live in a, uh, always uh, near the water and they get uh, uh, eaten by everything that's uh, uh, a predator over there. They have, I don't know how many predators they have, but they're basically a, a, a living burger for the rest of uh, the jungle. Crocodiles and, you know, lions and whatnot. Or jaguars, more mostly in South America. I guess they take it too easy, you know, they don't really realize the danger. They're just cool, you know, they chill and then uh, then they get caught. Because they don't pay attention. The thing is that I like better when uh, he's more front, you know. Well, like it's more, uh, and I guess I can do that, you know. But then, does he look too small? That's kind of my word. So, okay, hold on. Let's take this guy. I'm gonna give it a little boost.
I think I'll do that. You know, I kind of want him to be kind of big and impressive. This looks a little cute piglet. But from this angle, it's nice. So I think I'll do that. Oh. What do you guys think? I think it's good. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Let's see how it goes. So it's a matter of uh, trying not to mess up things too much. I was thinking that maybe I was gonna also uh, stream some uh, some gaming a little bit. Um, I don't want it to be a a thing for the for the channel, you know, necessarily because that's really. Uh, I mean, uh, there's uh, plenty of people that do that uh, way better than I could ever do. Um, I'm not a, a very good player uh, or gamer. I, 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 I love playing video games, but. Uh, I'm just not very good at them, so um, so I don't think there's a, a, a tremendous interest in seeing me uh, uh, playing games. But um, but I was thinking that maybe uh, one thing that I would like to do is uh, stream uh, games that uh, that I really uh, enjoyed f for um, for the creative aspect. I talk more about the creative aspect of it. Uh, you know, kind of play it uh, with uh, you, and uh, and uh, and then we can uh, we can talk about uh, the art and in it, and the impression that we get from it, and what are the things that are well done in terms of design? What are the things that kind of uh, trying to get uh, the ball rolling on the, on the something uh, that could be. Um, interesting you know to uh i don't know um it's just an idea like this i don't know if it's really uh something that uh, would uh, interest anyone but that's uh kind of an idea that i had Once in a while, you know, maybe a Friday night or something when we want to chill a little bit and we've done uh, quite a bit of uh, work during the week, we can uh, maybe uh, wind down the playing uh, so and also playing maybe I um, um, would like to show um, very old games that, uh, that I think still uh, hold up uh, for uh, different reasons. Uh, not that I wanted it to be a, uh, you know, the the stream of nostalgia either, but um, but really uh, just uh, giving justice to some things that uh, many uh, some some of you may not know, and uh, still interesting to know about, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what they represent in the sort of uh, the grand scheme of. Uh, uh, video game history, you know. so there might be a uh, cool things to uh, to discover. Um, could uh, also, um, and I would also um, uh, probably play uh, games that uh, made uh, really a strong impression on me because they're extremely uh, well done uh, creatively, like. Um, uh, for instance, um, let's talk about um, Inside. It's a good one that comes to mind. Um, really, um, uh, extremely uh, impressed with uh, 
the job that they made there is just a, a formidable uh, um, experience, really. And um, and so I think that could be an interesting uh, thing to uh, to play and uh, see in, uh, together. You know, there's also. Um, I keep uh, mentioning uh, Binding of Isaac, which is a way more hardcore game. It's very uh, can be quite uh, difficult actually, uh, but uh, I've uh, put uh, quite a few hours in it so far, and I still uh, very much enjoy it. And uh, it's a big. Uh, it's actually. A, a, I think it. You could call it the major influence in me, uh, modern influence. I would say. Um, in terms of a, a design for a video game, very very um, impressed by uh, by this this uh, this game for many different reasons. So I would uh, I think I would enjoy um, just you know streaming a little bit of it sometimes. And, um, I even uh, love, uh, and this is way more esoteric, I guess, um, the uh, older text adventure games, uh, even the new ones, actually, some people still make those uh, where it's uh, just text, you know, there's uh, no uh, pictures. And you would probably wonder if you're less than uh, 40, why would you ever consider playing a game that has no graphics in it but uh, I bet you you'd be surprised with what uh, some uh, talented people have done with this um, so I would uh, maybe I would like to uh, show this a bit show some example of uh, games that uh, that I think are really clever and really interesting. But I mean, ultimately, um, if uh, no one is interested, then uh, you know, I'll, I'll stick to making the art. I have to make this game anyway. It's not like, you know, I, I, I still have to be very focused on what I'm doing. But uh, I think it would be just a way to um, once in a while to add a bit of a you know variation to the stream and uh, to be a little more um, how can you say um, um, less formal you know do something that uh, is a bit more fun once in a while it's not always work, 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 you know. But we'll see uh, if uh, if uh, anyone is interested. <clears throat> Come on, Piggy. We need to make this happen now. This has got the big cheeks there but uh, I wonder if it's because of the position that he has there because he's kind of flat on the ground so he feels a little bit more like a balloon something that he has in the film is a blue color I don't think we can see it there, but um, oh yeah, there, blue. So we'll give him a 
I'm going to give him this. It's good because it'll separate the head from uh, the body a little bit. So that might be uh, helpful actually. this on another layer because I don't know exactly where it needs to sit and the, and the color of it and everything so I'll just do that for now I don't want it to be here. We can have a bit of thickness to it, but Suggest uh, some of it back there. <laughs> no worry. It would be nice to, uh, but uh, we can't really do that. So, um, So um, we'll, uh, darker. Oh, I'll go a bit of a uh, Lighting. See if we can do uh, this. That seems big. I think uh, I'm going to keep it uh, very small. We'll do this. Just a bit of a half pixels there, half transparency. So we'll give it a bit more chunky feel, but not too much. And then we can have a little uh, See if we can suggest a bit of a little uh, buckle or something, you know. Hmm. It'd be tricky to do. to um, I think we'll 
will do uh, something simple like this. Just a suggestion that there is a, a something. So in the creatures that um, I was thinking of making is the gremlins, it could be fun. Pretty, uh, pretty unique too. And I wonder if I'm going to have her, yeah, I think I'm going to have him behind her, actually. Um, I think it might be better. Something like that. It might be cool. Instead of always in front, you know. But like behind is uh, it's just a nice servo. Yeah, I, th I think um, I like uh, this better. So this eye, oh, wow. Size side doesn't seem right. <clears throat> oh. What am I doing? Actually, I think uh, in that case, we could uh, have him uh, way more in shadow back there. It's really, it's more about uh, integrating him with her. And uh, I think we want them to be a bit more separate. This is the same value, almost. So it needs to be a uh, needs to be darker, darker or lighter. You know, it can't be the uh, same. We 
be something like this. Very clean. Uh, with a clean value. Gonna be done soon, I think. It's not um, very easy to do, like I uh, suspected, because uh, I'm not too familiar with the uh, the shape of uh, the distribution of mass and everything. It's just a very uh, still pretty abstract animal for me. Try to simulate the, the wet nose if we can. Not sure we can.
So I get also the sense that uh, you know, <clears throat> fur is uh, it kind of varies. There's quite a bit of different colors in it. Creates all those interesting patterns and stuff. So. Shame that uh, the uh, the handle of the sledgehammer ends up there. Let's see if I can uh, well shorten it, maybe. It might be okay to do that. Can't really see it very much anyway, so. Might be okay to do that. Very uh, silent at the moment, I'm sorry. Just uh, trying to uh, wrap this up now, so <clears throat> I'm a bit more focused. I think we're gonna be, uh, <clears throat> we're gonna be done in a few minutes here. Yeah, I think See if I can maybe show a little bit of that back leg. Have it dark. Try not to create to um, too many tangents.
<clears throat> so flip this. I think it's not bad. Uh, the um, the nose there is uh, not uh, the best uh, read on it. So I think I'm gonna have to <clears throat> keep this. Uh, Wish I could do the the lighting, but uh, oh, it's just not very readable, you know. can do that. Be a bit more readable now. I think nose itself could be even a bit darker to make sure. Shells Woody in the face. Just a bit more, more defined, even if it's big. <clears throat> Let's see, flip again. Mm, I think it's a uh, I'd be better this way. Actually, the other thing too that I kind of messed up, I realized this now. It's it's very rounded on top actually. So he's got this shape there. It's very typical, very characteristic shape. So, and I already messed it up because it's very straight now. So actually, I can't do that. I think that's a mistake. Maybe more flat at the bottom. It's tricky because it gets too big. It's very really hard to, to get. We 
Maybe that's a better shape, actually. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's. Better. I can't really see the mouth. Uh, so from the front, it seems like uh, it's very difficult. And this, uh, the head is raised like this. I don't know, at the same time, um, it's a bit weird, it's much clearer, so I don't know. Maybe I ought to. Hmm. I'm not really sure what's the best there. I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna do this for now, and uh, I think I'll look at it tomorrow, like I always do. Um, I will let this uh, sit a little bit, <clears throat> and. Uh, and I'll look at it uh, with the fresh eyes uh, tomorrow or the day after. And I think at that point I'll have a better uh, idea of what I should do. <laughs> Maybe. Kind of a nice little shape for the eyes. Sweep those two again. I think maybe one of the issues. Okay, let me keep it on the side. One of the issues is that uh, his nose doesn't feel long enough. So I wonder if we could cheat this. Cheat more of a, a long nose. Then I'm afraid it's gonna look like a like a dog or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more like dogish now. It's because I think there's we need more nose at the bottom as well. I'm just uh, 
doing an experiment right now. It doesn't say it yeah. has a lot of value, but uh, it's good to try things. I wonder if we should do something like this, you know. Flip them again. No, oh, this guy too. I need to flip him. So I'm not sure this is better. I'd like to try, you know, but uh, hmm. He's mining. Kind of tricky if we want to get him really uh, right. The 
is a little smaller. See? Mm. Maybe this is a bit better still. Hey, Kappa Joe. Uh, yeah, Photoshop, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you already feel better. Why is that? Because, uh, because you, do you also uh, use uh, Photoshop? So if I missed you in the chat, I was, I was focusing on the, on this and I uh, couldn't uh, really, uh, oh yeah, it's right. So see, uh, it's right. It's interesting you mentioned this because uh, I actually uh, have it there. Um, you know, it's in the, my computer there. Um, and actually uh, I tried it because, um, you know, there was a few people that came here on the, um, on the, uh, stream and they uh, they mentioned a sprite they said yeah it's much better to to do this and that and so, so all that stuff but uh, i've been using uh, photoshop for years now uh, like many many years so i was a bit reluctant to uh to change but um um and uh, and also uh, i mean i know all those uh, sort of a dedicated sprite uh, software because i come from um a time where um, I used uh, like a very old school. I used to use a uh, deluxe paint on Atari ST, 
in uh, Amiga and uh, Neo Chrome on the ST. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, you know a software that had uh, 16 colors. That was it. <clears throat> um, and I even um, and I had, and you, you, there was no tablet or anything. It was uh, doing everything by uh, mouse. And even before that, on the C64, I was doing the graphics with the joystick, you know. So um, I'm definitely uh, familiar with the, the whole uh, indexed palette and all that sort of stuff that, uh, you know, those uh, those software uh, make uh, easier. But um, so, you know, I was like, I should probably give it a try because uh, you never know, you know, and um, and I think uh, S Sprite. I think it's good to for um, yeah, f exactly for animating, for animating exactly. I think I think for animation you probably do want to go uh, with a dedicated software. I also think that S Sprite does some interesting things like um, the fact that you can uh, rescale without having any resampling. Photoshop, you have to bring this in another document and. <clears throat> at least I don't know any other way. There's also uh, you can rotate without the the bad uh, resampling, you know. Uh, so there's a few things that are actually quite convenient in H right? Also, I think the um, the um, there are a few things they they do really well overall that are very convenient. Um, and also, if you want to work with palettes, it's very good because you can index the palettes and change then then one color in the palette. Uh, you can force palettes very well. It's very clever at uh, minimizing palettes. So, so I think there's a lot of very good things about it. Um, but also, um, uh, to to be honest, I, f I feel like I've used I've used it maybe. It's not like I've used it many a lot of time. But maybe um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, depending on where I am. Um, I don't know, maybe, you know, a few hours, maybe five, six hours or so. And, um, and I was uh, kind of fighting with the UI a, a bit. I feel like there's a lot of uh, stuff that is, uh, it's just not great, you know, in terms of, uh, and it, I think it's normal because it's a fairly young software and uh, they still have a, stuff to figure out you know like photoshop how many years uh, do they have under their belt so they can uh, refine uh, over time so uh, i don't i don't blame you know a sprite for uh, certainly for uh, for not being as uh, easy um, and as a uh, uh, intuitive as a photoshop um, and for the most part they try to replicate most of the um, shortcuts and workflow in photoshop as so I think they they're conscious of that, the fact that a lot of people use Photoshop and they need to be, uh, they can't really uh, go too far away from Photoshop. Um, but I think still there's a lot of uh, annoying shortcomings. That uh, overall I felt like I was uh, I was struggling quite a bit, but I was not getting really any benefit for it, any really strong benefit because I was not animating. And I don't need the um, um, yeah, it's just not for sure. And and also, uh, but you're right. I think I don't I don't want to be saying that I'll never use this part or anything. I think there's a uh, you just have to give it some time, you know, to uh, for them to be a little more refined. Um, for me, it's really about what benefit do I get from using it. You know, I'm not going to use it. Just for the sake of using it, um, and I'm much faster in Photoshop than I am in uh, in HBrite. and also um, I think HBrite is uh, still uh, pretty um, limited when it comes down to uh, manipulating uh, colors and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a um, um, there's a ton of things that you add. easily add contrast and control palette very well and uh, um, that I know how to do in Photoshop and in HBrite they, uh, it's very uh, it's very uh, bare bones for all that stuff and, and I, I like controlling the colors really well so um so I think uh, yeah HBrite is not really for me for for my for my usage it's not 
really uh, the best at the moment. Um, but if I was, and, and also um, even uh, for the game, I'm not gonna use uh, index palettes, I don't think, you know, uh, it doesn't really, it's not really relevant at this point. Um, so, but we'll see. It's, it, but it's possible that uh, when I come down to animation, I may, uh, uh, you know, uh, dump everything into a spread and start animating in there. It's uh, very, uh, very well possible for sure. And I'll definitely uh, give it a shot because uh, at that point it'll be uh, interesting to uh, to try the animation. Yeah, I mean, if you use if you use Photoshop for a long time, it's it's very hard to uh, uh, to uh, to come back. You know, you just have to because there's there's so much uh, reflexes, and I mean, uh, Photoshop I know it so well that um, I can't I don't even think about what I'm. You know, it's completely like it's second nature. I don't even think about what I'm doing. I just do it. You know, and then um, it, it's true that. Uh, it, it takes some time to get uh, that comfortable with the software and um so to in order to make I, I, i'm willing to make the effort to uh learn another software and get comfortable with it but in order to do that um i would need uh, to be sure that i get a very uh, strong benefit you know um and at some point it, it's possible it will be the case i think But I'm glad to see that people are trying to make a, like a good dedicated software to this because um, I think there's still a lot of things you can do to improve that uh, overall uh, type of uh, artwork, you know. I think there's quite a few things that they could do. I still don't know which one I'm going to take. Ah, this guy is a problem. <clears throat> Tempted to, to, to use this though. Like this. This looks like kind of a bat. It's got a bat face. Like this is a bit, bit more piggish. I'm gonna commit to this for now, and uh, I'll look at it tomorrow or the day after. Uh, maybe I'll start from scratch. Who knows? I think this one that might be uh, taking uh, uh, some time to uh, to perfect, uh, well, to get to a place where I feel uh, comfortable. You know. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, actually, uh, is it? Uh, it's uh, Capo Joe. Thank you for the follow. Thank you very much. Yeah, feel free to come back whenever you want. For me, it's uh, one o'clock, so I assume you're probably uh, Midwest or something. <clears throat> but yeah, it's uh, one uh, in the morning for me. I've been working since I've been streaming this uh, since uh, nine p.m. So it's been uh, uh, close to four hours now. Um, so. Uh, uh, took a bit of time. Um, I can show you really quickly. Uh, I guess I haven't shown you all the characters uh, that I made so far. Um, so uh, all the uh, movie characters, um, from Conan to Darkness and Legend, um, you know, uh, Mac Ready of uh, The Thing, Mike Myers, uh, Freddy Krueger, The Reanimator, Indiana Jones, Robocop, uh, Sarkana, Flashdance, uh, Popeye from a uh, French Connection, um, Red Sonia, Pinhead from uh, Hellraiser, Jack Torrance, um, The Shining, uh, Rock, uh, um, uh, the Rocket Guy. How what's his name? Uh, ugh, whatever. I'll find it. Um, the Rocketeer, um, then uh, Jessica Rabbit. Um, that's. Um, <coughs> 
Dave Bowman from 2001 Space Odyssey. Um, um, Montana from um, Scarface, and then uh, Ripley, Leatherface, Zero and, uh, and Cornelius from Planet of the Apes. That's uh, Luke Skywalker, Beetlejuice, Elephant Man, Ben Hur, T800, Alex uh, Axel Foley, and uh, Beverly's Cup, Bill Kigor, Apocalypse Now, and that's Rambo and um, Forrest Gump, the Iron Giant, and <laughs> keeps going. Blondie, um, what's the name? A very rare from Conan, Mad Max. The Xenomorph Alien, um, Snake Pliskin, Foxy from Foxy Brown, uh, Flash Gordon, Nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cocker's Nest, um, and Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, The Predator, and now Annie Wilkes from um, uh, Misery. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, so quite a few characters. And this is uh, what I'm doing at the moment uh, for, I want to do a game with all those characters and it's sort of a survival game. And uh, this is uh, how I imagine uh, that I would uh, treat uh, the map. So uh, depending on where you go, uh, from environment to environment, you go to a prison, then to a hospital, then, you know, a gas station, an office building, and then you go in the forest. And, and so every uh, little uh, en like environment area would be a uh, not defined on a map like an isometric or little square like this uh, so I made all those little uh, pieces of, uh, of environment and then for the actual moment-to-moment uh, -moment gameplay I would have a second types of an uh, representation probably a side view maybe voxel I'm thinking of using voxels I'm not sure and uh, I also want to do a famous uh, vehicles like uh, Christine uh, the DeLorean from uh, Back to the Future the Love Beetle and the, sp the Spinner from uh, Blade Runner, and even uh, all the old props from E.T., Back to the Future, old computer, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, th thanks for following for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, come back and uh, and if uh, you have uh, questions or anything, uh, you know, I'm here to uh, also share uh, that stuff with, with you guys. So um, it's uh, it's really uh, something I'm always uh, happy to uh, to talk about. Um, and uh, you, you can, uh, I think, in the stream, uh, if you if you look uh, below the stream, there's um, there's uh, um, my Instagram, I think, and Twitter. So you can always uh, uh, follow me on Instagram, and you'll see. Uh, I'll usually post what I what I've done on the stream uh, later on Instagram, and the idea is to try and uh, stream the whole development of an entire game from uh, start to finish uh, over uh, several years. Actually, it's a bit crazy, <laughs> but uh, we'll see if uh, how how it goes. You know, um, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's it, and um, and I stream on uh, Monday and Wednesday and Friday uh, at 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So that's probably around 11 for you, unfortunately. It's a bit late. Um, but uh, yeah, I have no other choice, really. That's the only time, because I work during the days. So it's the only time I have to, to stream, really. Um, but uh, yeah, I think actually I'm, I'm pretty uh, OK with her at the moment. I think I'm going to. Uh, probably um, let me name them really quickly um, I think I'm gonna probably uh, end the stream and um, and then I'll look at it tomorrow you know see if um, um, if uh, if I'm happy I'm still happy there's a chance that uh, I may uh, change a few things in uh, usually um, the next day you see uh, you see a lot of the issues you know um, so we'll, uh, and then I'll probably post uh, her in a final version uh, around uh, either tomorrow and, or Sunday maybe. And I'll be back on Monday uh, with, uh, we'll see what we do, maybe a new character or environment, we'll see. 
So uh, yeah, have a good night, man. Thank you for for coming, and uh, feel free to come back whenever you want. So um, well, I guess that's a good time to uh, close it, actually. So that was uh, Annie Works from Misery. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, I mean, the pig, you know, well, the pig is the pig. Is 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 what he is. Not, I'm not super proud, but whatever, you know. Uh, I'm getting tired right now, so I think I'll have a clearer mind tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but I think she came out okay. Um, she's all right. Uh, so um, that's going to be it for her, and then uh, we'll see what we do next time. Uh, probably another character, I'm sure. I suppose I have a you know 120 or so to do. So there's a lot of uh, of things we have to to make. So um yeah thanks uh, thanks guys thanks for everyone who came here even if it was for a few minutes I always appreciate the support I appreciate the people uh, chatting to and uh, uh you know uh, giving them two cents it's always uh, interesting for me to get a different perspective on things so um and then uh and then I wish you a really good weekend and I'll see you back on uh, Monday it's going to be uh, as usual 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on Monday. So, yeah, there you have it. And uh, on this, uh, I'm out. Thank you very much. Bye.